welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel so past few presentation we deal regarding that uh, documentation and then preparatory part and then we seen regarding uh, communication related medical legal ethical issue so those are the things related with and how uh, the emt how we have to prepare our career and then now we enter into the core topic so the upcoming days we are going to cover with an system wise emergencies so being a pre hospital paramedic uh, what are the things we have to know how we have to handle the emergency and then what are the systemic assessment uh, what is the way we have to do and then how uh, how we have to manage it more specifically in pre hospital region so those are the things we are going to cover so being a part of that one first part we took as a respiratory emergency so in respiratory emergency in this part mainly we are focusing on the Uh, how to assess a respiratory system so this is the patient assessment format so uh, uh, in our ed in our emergency medicine so this is the standard format uh, it may be a whatever emergency or whatever situation if you uh, get into the emergency system means this is the way of assessment this is the way of assessment mean the same thing this is the way of management so quite bit different with an in hospital setup uh, in general medicine or whichever thing they will use to like a systemic assessment they will follow the various method but the standard format in emergency medicine either it's a pre hospital management or there is in hospital emergency ed casualty department this is the set of management a set of assessment we have to follow up so first thing we have to do the scene size up primary survey history taking secondary assessment and then reassessment so we kept like a one one word but each and everything have a lot of stuff so one by one will be will see so first important step is a scene size up scene size up includes the scene safety and then determine the mechanism of injury or nature of illness taking a standard precaution and then determine the number of patients how many patients uh, being a casualty uh, consider additional or specialized uh, specialized resources so we'll do on we'll see one by one first one scene safety and then determine the mechanism of injury so how we can get while the uh, time of uh, receiving a call from the dispatcher itself so you can ask what is the uh, uh, emergency that was and then Uh, so by that you can get some clues and then you can um, plan something like a, so how we can save ourselves and then how we can safely approach the scene and then what are the standard precautions standard precaution means nothing but it's just a infection control practices like hand washing and then uh, getting some uh, appropriate personal protective equipment so we can plan like that so initially getting call from the dispatcher itself so you can gather the information regarding the scene and then send so by wait uh, you can prepare yourself and then you can approach the scene so that is the thing scene safety scene safe for us uh, being a paramedic we have to save ourselves mean the same thing we have to consider the safety of the uh, patient second thing we have to determine the mechanism of injury and nature of illness so these are the things will give a clue uh, uh, give a clue like a thing so if the person hit uh, the so you get a call like a four wheeler versus four wheeler so how the impact happened so uh, either it's a rear end collision otherwise front front collision so where the person uh, sit either he is a driver or co passenger passenger so those are the things will give us some clue uh, while the time of management and then further management so these are the things uh, give a important uh, some glimpse like a thing so we have to determine the mechanism of injury either if it is not a trauma means we have to think the nature of illness how the in, uh, infection or how the person gets uh, what trigger that uh, induce the illness so, so those are the things you have to take care so standard precaution as like we told it's a standard precaution means infection control practices those are the things include hand washing and then waste disposal uh, appropriately we have to dispose the waste and then using a uh, proper personal protective equipment so more specifically in respiratory system we should uh, have a, at least we should have a examination gloves and then eye protection and then face mask and then face seal if necessary 
so determine the number of person uh, by the time of getting a call itself you can determine otherwise once if you reach the scene means there you can identify some bunch of people so you can roughly calculate something so by we can if we want additional support otherwise you want additional ems personal means you can uh, go for those other things so that is the clue for the uh, determining the number of person consider additional specialized resources also you can ask for so these are the things comes with the scene size so once you settle down the scene so you uh, referred you uh, clear the all the scene and then you make sure the scene is safety for you and then next we are going to approach the person otherwise patient so this is the thing called as a primary survey primary survey that includes generalized impression otherwise some of them quoting like initial 10 second assessment and then mental status of the person and then a b c d e means airway breathing circulation disability exposure if it is a trauma cases means airway with cervical spine protection breathing and ventilation c means circulation and hemorrhagic control d means disability and neurological examination e means exposure and environmental control so if it is a medical mean a b c d airway breathing circulation disability exposure if it is a, a trauma means that will differ so I add on things like a cervical spine protection and then as a hemorrhagic control environmental control that those are the add on things on the uh, trauma related cases so first in primary survey we have to do the form a generalized impression and then we have to do the assess the mental status form a generalized impression means while entering the scene otherwise while entering the room itself so you are uh, looking the person appearance so for how uh, how the appearance of the otherwise how the nature of the room uh, so how the nature of the field uh, so it will give us some clues so you here i mentioned like a positioning of the person so in light of a respiratory system uh, the person with the respiratory distress they won't maintain the supine position so they usually in supine position they will get a lot of dyspnea or respiratory distress or difficulty in breathing so wise they will maintain the sitting position or tripod position or sniffing position so sitting position as uh, all are aware about this a tripod position means this is the tripod position so the person lean forward and then they put out a elbow out if posteriorly if you see in mean the scapula uh, rotated laterally so that's um, this is the manner it's called tripod position tripod like a like a position so this while they will get some relaxation while taking a breathing so third position is a sniffing position means it's nothing but a head tilt chin lift position where we are using in normal airway maintenance that's a position of sniffing position so while the time of inhalation they will maintain the sniffing position and then while the time of exhalation they will flex the uh, neck and then they will uh, easily exhale so those are some critical uh, position they will maintain in the time of respiratory distress so those you have to mention those we have to assess and then field impression as like we told how uh, while entering the scene itself or while entering the room itself so you have to assess the room how is the room so if the person is chronically ill means that might be dirty and then that might be a some we can tell so some of tissues or something so it, it will be a some ill nature like a thing so those are the things we have to take in account so by that we can suspect some infectious related things so then second part is a first part is a initial 10 second assessment or form a generalized impression second part is a assess the mental status so last presentation itself we see in like a avpu scale a means awake and alert uh, awake and alert to person place time and even that is a4 a3 a2 and the last uh, part we discussed v means response to the verbal stimuli p means response to the pain stimuli u means unresponsive so first step we assess the initial 10 second assessment and then we did the mental status of the person third step is an airway so uh, airway means in trauma means as like we told airway and then with the cervical spine protection also we have to take so airway what are the things we have to keep in mind means we there is an one uh, clue like a thing so we have to open the airway look into airway clear the airway and then secure the airway open the airway means 
So how we'll open the airway? Usually we'll do the manuals, head tilts in lift manual we are doing. In trauma cases, mainly we are doing the jaw thrust manual. So that is the open the airway, look into airway. So any obstruction, any foot material or foreign material is there or not. Otherwise any tongue fall is there or not. So those are the things we have to look into the airway. Clear the airway. If it is a tongue fall, otherwise if it is a foot material is there, otherwise any other uh, obstructing material is there means we have to clear the airway. So clear the airway usually we are doing with an uh, laterally we have to approach the oral cavity and then we are doing the finger sweep method. This is the method we can use. Otherwise uh, simple suction or portable suction machine if we have means in our pre-hospital region. So we can use the suction apparatus also. And then secure the airway. So secure the airway, so a lot of devices, we have basic airway devices like oropharyngeal airway, nasopharyngeal airway, if the person is unconscious, otherwise uh, GCS less than 8 means, so you can go with a definitive airway like a cuffed endotracheal tube, those are the things you can go. So open the airway, look into airway, clear the airway, secure the airway. So as a patency, so if any food or gum is there means you have to remove, otherwise you can use the uh, portable suction apparatus also. And then we have to provide the comfortable position for the person. That is also most important. We should not ask the person to lie down and then we should not ask the person to uh, turn or this side, that side. So we have to give the freedom for them. So likewise, they will uh, sit, some person they will uh, use like a tripod position, otherwise some person they will use like a sniffing position. So based on the, his or her comfortability, we have to leave it for so and then we have to take a glance on the body type. Uh, it's like we give an example of embysema. So embysema, uh, that is the cavity, it will be like this. So embysema, in embysema mainly we will get a barrel chest appearance. Barrel chest means, so the anteroposterior diameter is equal to transverse diameter. Means, the anterior antero posterior diameter of the chest is equal to the transverse diameter. So in our normal human being, so otherwise normal healthy adult, the antero posterior diameter is less than transverse diameter. Means if antero posterior diameter is 1 means, so the transverse diameter is 2. Sorry, you have to put like this. Antero posterior diameter is 1 means, your uh, transverse diameter is greater. So like this it will come. So but in the case of M by Sima, there will be a barrel chest like appearance. Barrel chest means if the antero posterior diameter is 2, mean the same time transverse diameter also 2. So likewise it will give a barrel like appearance. So that also we have to take in into account. And then some predisposing factors so we can uh, think like a risk factor related thing. If the person is tall, thin, uh, tall and thin young adult means, so we can suspect a spontaneous pneumothorax. So the woman who smokes otherwise take oral contraceptive means, we can think somewhat like a pulmonary embolus uh, related means. So spontaneous pneumothorax is nothing but without any lung pathology, um, spontaneously the person getting into the pneumothorax. Either it may be a trauma related thing, whether it may be a bullet rupture related thing. So that is the spontaneous pneumothorax without any lung pathology, the person developing into the pneumothorax. So this is the part of airway. And the next part is a breathing. So we have to assess the work of breathing. So how much effort he is taking, uh, taking to take a breath, that is the work of breathing. So either the person is using accessory muscle or not. So accessory muscle we know for inspiration, so we have a sternocleidomaster, pectoris major and then pectoris minor, uh, serratus on anterior, those are the muscle we have. For inhalation, accessory muscle. For exhalation, we have accessory muscle of abdominal muscles like um, external oblique, internal oblique, transverse oblique, those are the things. So how we can do the simple assessment? So if the person have a increased uh, work of breathing means, just to put up the shirt, here you can see the sternocleidomastite. While the time of inhalation, sternocleidomastite will take part. Exhalation, that's abdominal part, transverse muscle, external oblique, internal oblique uh, will take place. So, so simply put up the collar or the shirt, there you can see the using of the sternocleidomastite. It is 
it will happen in the case of adult but in the case of pediatric there will be a bony retraction so this is the bony retraction here all things are the cartilaginous bone so usually the bone of the pediatric is a cart cartilaginous more um, uh, elasticity nature so there it won't show any muscle related thing here it will show related thing bone related thing so the bone easily get retraction the person will appear like a bone retraction you can see and then pursed lips you can see and then nasal flaring also we can see so and then a tracheal duct is also the another thing so it is a tracheal duct tracheal duct means abnormal downward movement of the trachea while the taking of breathing so normal human being a normal healthy adult it won't happen but in the case of uh, increased work of breathing cases there will be a abnormal downward movement of the trachea this is the exact picture and then paradoxical breathing movement is nothing but uh, the unsynchronized movement of the chest and abdominal work so in normal uh, breathing normal healthy individuals what will happen if in the uh, case of inhalation chest and then abdominal cavity will expand but in paradoxical breathing movement there will be if chest expand means abdominal move inward while the time of exhalation uh, chest go inward means abdominal come outward that is the thing uh, will happen in a paradoxical breathing movement pulses paradoxes another terminology while the time of inhalation the person systolic uh, blood pressure will drop more than 10 mm hg so while the time of inhalation the person's systolic blood pressure will drop more than at a range of more than 10 mm hg so that is the thing pulses paradoxes so uh, this is the way if the person have uh, any accessory muscle use otherwise in pediatric any bony retraction otherwise any tracheal duct paradoxical breathing movement pulses paradoxes means so the person have increased work of breathing air hunger so we have to uh, treat based on the causes related thing so we'll now in this slide we are going to deal with the assessment part next upcoming part we'll see the what are the management we have to take part mean the same times we have to assess the rate and depth so rate wise uh, you can count manually you can place your palm over the abdominal of the person and then you can count the rise and fall otherwise we are having uh, in monitor if you connected the multi parameter if you connected the ecg electrode means that will show the respiratory rate related things so depth we can assess with a continuous etco2 monitoring we can assess otherwise in a non invasive pulse oximetry also you can assess rate means the wave will come like this so in that is a inspiration expiration inspiration expiration there will be a minute pause and then inspiration expiration inspiration expiration so this is the rate so how much wave is go uh, rising and falling that is the 1 2 3 4 like this so how much rate will, will come so depth means so how much depth he is taking inspiration expiration so inspiration expiration so the depth the height of the wave is depth so if the person taking shallow breathing means so the breath will come like this so it won't have a, that much of peak so the depth means height is the depth the number of wave is a rate related thing so pulse oxy with the pulse oxy also you can measure the rate and depth while uh, mean the same time we have to assess the pattern of the respiration that is also most important what is the rhythm regularity rhythm how we is maintaining the what is the respiratory rhythm also most important so in that we have a various thing agonal respiration apnea ataxic or biot bradypenia chain stroke small pattern and then tachypenia so we'll see one by one first one is an uh, agonal respiration agonal respiration mainly we'll see in the case of cardiac arrest related thing there will be an wide irregular breathing pattern like that it will come wide and then irregular breathing pattern apnea that it's a, we well known that is a absence of breathing there will be a single line ataxic or biot means mainly it will happen in the case of um, brain stem insult if anything uh, any injury happen in the brain stem means that will cause ataxic or biot that will be a irregular breathing pattern 
there will be a irregular breathing pattern will be there in between apnea also will present so ir somewhat irregular breathing pattern and then apnea also occur that is a ataxic or biot respiration biop bradypenia means the rate wise less than 12 or less than 10 breaths per minute bradypenia sign stroke respiration also it will happen in the case of mainly any other brainstem insult a uh, brainstem injury related thing sign stroke uh, that will happen related here uh, ataxic respiration irregular breathing pattern and then there will be apnea so but sign stroke there will be a gradually increasing in rate and depth that is a regular manner gradually that will be rate and depth will increase finally apnea and then gradually again the rate and depth will increase again apnea that is the regular manner it will follow so and then kusmal's pattern mainly it will happen in the case of dka that is the pattern like uh, um, increased depth and rate increased depth and rate that is the concept in the kusmal's respiration so the depth also will increase the rate also will increase mainly in the case of diabetic ketoacidosis tachypnea will know that more than 20 breaths per minute that is the rate will be increased in manner so these are the various rhythm pattern also we have to keep in mind and then we have to assess the ie ratio what how many time he is taking for the inspiration how many time he is taking for the expiration how many seconds and then again and is any any peculiar order is there or not here we mentioned like acetone order smell in the dka cases likewise uh, pink frothy sputum otherwise some in chronic cases we will get some sput smelly sputum so those are the thing also we have to mention and then we have to we should know any abnormal respiratory noises so we'll see first normal respiratory noises then we'll go the abnormal first thing normal breath sound here we mention like a tracheal tracheal sign means if you put your stethoscope over the tracheal region means the inspiratory and then expiratory sound will be in a both loud so the thickness of the bar is indicates the intensity how much loud it was so if you ascultate over the tracheal region means the inspiratory and then expiratory sound in both in nature and then it will be both both are loud in nature but if you go into the bronchial means where we have to put the steth so a bronchial mainly we can keep the steth in the sternal angle angle of fluids either left side of the angle of fluids or right side of the angle of fluids so if you put a left side means you will give the left side of the bronchus sound right side means res respective area right side means as so we will hear the right side bronchial sounds there if you put a steth over the bronchial region means their inspiratory sound are shorter than the expiratory sound. So you will hear a short inspiratory sound, but the expiratory sound gets a somewhat a duration you will hear. And then the intensity wise, both are will be loud only. And bronchiovesicular sound is inspiratory and then expiratory both sound are same intensity like um, tracheal but in the sound loudness will be somewhat less compared to the trachea and then bronchial vesicular means all over the lung field all over the lung field so how is the sound so here inspiratory sound lasts longer than the expiratory sound but here the sound nature is a faint somewhat smoothy sound you will hear so tracheal means both are loud uh, tracheal and then bronchial is a loud sound uh, both uh, bronchiovesicular and then vesicular sound is somewhat smoothy sound so come into the this is the normal uh, breathing sound uh, comes into the abnormal breathing sound so here they were given like a inspiration so when the sound is happening either the time of inhalation or exhalation and then either it is a low pitch or high pitch so two classification so inhalation there is an only one sound at the time at the end of inhalation you will hear the crackles 
so crackles uh, sound will happen uh, when the time of movement of air or sorry movement of any uh, fluid or mucus in the um, larger airway otherwise in your alveolus like a thing so if any movement of the mucus or fluid in the alveoli or airway means that will produce the crackle sound and then in exhalation part we will have a raucous and then V sound so you can see the here the crackles happening at the end of the inspiration but exhalation part the V's and then raucous is a continuous sound so that is happening uh, throughout the exhalation part throughout the expiration so V is a that is a high intensity sound so you can see the large V that is a high intensity high loudly sound and then raucous is a somewhat low pitch low intensity sound um, uh, when it will happen means raucous means so I used to tell like RL fluid. So you, we may aware about that uh, ringer lactate fluid now. So when the wrong case sound will produce means, so if any fluid in the larger airway that will produce the wrong case. So simply you can remember as a RL fluid. So if any fluid otherwise if any mucus in the larger airway that will produce the wrong case sound. Uh, V's is uh, all we uh, know about in um, asthma cases, chronic obstructive cases, uh, if any secretion in the airway means we will get a V sound. And then one more sound is there, that is the strider. So strider when it will happen means I used to tell like a voice, we know about the operating software, you can remember. So when it will produce mean any obstruction in the airway means if any more specifically above the glottis means that will produce the strider. So any OS, any obstruction in the uh, glottis, within glottis or above the glottis means that will produce the strider. So various sound crackles, V's, bronchus and then strider. These are the common abnormal sounds. So the important key things in the sound auscultation, first thing all pathological condition that is the gravity dependent. So well uh, nicely we can auscultate in the lung basis. Where we can place your steth means we can uh, place our steth in posterior region. So means uh, in uh, below the scapulary region if you place your steth means you can hear the nice uh, intensity otherwise uh, there is the ideal area to assess the uh, pathological condition. And then coming into the V's part, that is uh, diffuse in manner. So all over the uh, vesicular region, you can hear that V-sing sound. So most specifically, pathological is a gravity dependent. So usually you can go with an posterior side of the thoracic cavity. V-sing sound, you can place wherever in the vesicular region and then you can use. First part is a sound auscultation. Second part is a uh, transmission of the sound. So how efficiently that sound is transmitting. First important thing, breath sound and vocalization that will more efficiently travel through the fluid compared with an air. So here I mentioned like a healthy lung. In healthy lung, usually we'll have a air. But if any lung pathology means that if any fluid means, so the flu, uh, the um, Vocalization and the breath sound that will nicely move on the uh, fluid filled region compared with an healthy air lung. So here we given uh, some terminology like a bronchophony and then egophony. Bronchophony means you can ask the person to tell like a 99, 99, 99 continuously and then if you place your step over the vesicular region, if you ascultate the sound means you will get the sound of uh, hum like a uh, hum like a sound in normal healthy individual 
if the person have any lung pathology any other um, fluid filled cavity means pulmonary edema cases you will get a, uh, you will hear like a clear 99 sound so that is the term of bronchophony egophony means if ask the person to tell like a e and then you will uh, if the person have a fluid filled or pulmonary uh, edema means if the person is telling e means you will hear like a a like a thing so that is the some set of assessment so easily you can do the bronchophony ask the person to tell the 99 99 99 continuously if you place your stress means you will you can uh, clearly ascultate the clearly uh, hear the 99 sound but in the normal healthy individual that won't happen like that that will sound like a hum like a sound so these are the key things in the sound ascultation and then coming into circulation so third one is the circulation part we have to hear we have to assess the skin color and then we have to assess the pulse and then we have to assess the capillary refill time and then we have to assess the urine output so in skin color normal healthy individuals we have been under the eyelids and then your nail bed you will get a pink color but in some variation like a cyanosis and then chocolate brown skin or chocolate brown venous blood a pale skin and then note the signs of dehydration cyanosis when it will happen cyanosis means usually we know the cyanosis means bluish discoloration but the important question is when the cyanosis will appear when the bluish discoloration will appear means you are what at what range so your deoxygenated hemoglobin level reaches more than 5 gram per deciliter means then only your um, bluish discoloration otherwise cyanosis will occur means your deoxygenated hemoglobin level reaches more than 5 gram per deciliter means then the deox uh, the sorry then uh, you will get a bluish discoloration that is called cyanosis so on the time if you uh, approximate if you assess the spo2 means approximately it's somewhat about 65 percentage you will get in your uh, pulse oximetry so the important thing is uh, deoxygenated hemoglobin level more than 5 gram per deciliter chocolate brown skin mainly uh, nitrogen related poisoning there will be a methemoglobin level if it is increased in manner means there you will get a chocolate brown skin skin a skin wise appearance it's very very rare condition but if you took a blood sample venous blood sample means it is a normal thing it is a increased methemoglobin level so if you took a norm uh, venous blood means there you can see the brown like appearance chocolate brown like appearance then you can see and then pale skin we know the hypoperfusion and the note of any signs of dehydration dehydration easily we can see the oral mucosa you can see and then in late cases skin turgor also we can see sunken eyes those are the signs but the first important uh, notable things are the oral mucosa easily we can identify as like we told we have to assess the pulse uh, capillary refill time and then urine output also and then fourth part is a disability and neurological examination for neurological examination we have a class for common scale and then pupillary assessment like a berla score berla means pup pupils are equal round and reactive to light and then accommodation so that score we can assess and then most important thing here is a co2 narcosis so here we are mainly focusing on the respiratory system so if the person getting an hypo uh, ventilation the moreover prolonged time hypoventilation means there will be a hypercapnia so thereby it will react on the nervous system and then it will leads to the nervous system and then blood vessels lot of things and then it will leads to the co2 narcosis sleepiness and then sedative state like a thing they will maintain so that is the most important thing here we have to mention um, and then once after in your primary survey you have to think the transport decision so while once you started with a generalized impression and then we have to assess the mental status airway breathing circulation disability so quickly we have to think where we have to transport at what facility we can easily approach and then so you have to think like and then here it is the step of transport decision related thing and the next step is so if still you have a timing means then you can go for the history taking method history taking we are here we are using the sample technique 
சாம்பிள் மீன்ஸ் எஸ் மீன்ஸ் சயின்ஸ் அண்ட் சிம்டம்ஸ் ஏ மீன் அலர்ஜிக் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி எம் மீன்ஸ் மெடிக்கேஷன் பி மீன்ஸ் ஃபாஸ்ட் மெடிக்கல் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி எல் மீன்ஸ் லாஸ்ட் ஓரல் இன்டேக் இ மீன்ஸ் ஈவன்ஸ் லீட் டு தி இன்ஜுரி ஆர் இல்னஸ் ஸோ எஸ் மீன்ஸ் சயின்ஸ் அண்ட் சிம்டம்ஸ் வாட் இஸ் த சப்ஜெக்டிவ் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் டேட்டா அலர்ஜி மீன்ஸ் எனி அதர் நோன் மெடிசன் ஆர் ஃபுட் அலர்ஜி தே ஹாவ் ஆர் நாட் மெடிக்கேஷன் வைஸ் தே யூஸ்வலி இன் ரெஸ்பிரேட்டரி சிஸ்டம் தே வில் யூஸ் ஆன்டிடெஸ்யூ அண்ட் தென் சம் கார்டிகோஸ்டீரைட்ஸ் ரிலேட்டட் திங்ஸ் சம்டைம்ஸ் அண்ட் தென் தே மே யூஸ் லைக் Uh, what are the things mucolytics related thing they may use so those are the things we have to take in account moreover over the counter drugs any if thing they uh, continuously they are taking otherwise on the time of even they took or not that we have to uh, note and then in past medical history so here you have to mention like a, a compare with the last time either the same person will get a, the same thing in the last time so we have to compare both them either that is a more intensity more severe with than last time or less severe and then either ask the person any tobacco use any second hand smoke exposure any possible exposure also we have to ask and then last oral intake is a one part last oral intake um, uh, to uh, get a idea related thing with an endotracheal intubation so while the endotracheal intubation if the person is full stomach means that will leads to the aspiration related thing so so we have to ask last oral intake what food or what uh, any juice he had at what time he had how much quantity he had those are the things we have to keep in mind so roughly we can uh, i so if we got those are the things we can roughly we can identify the gastric emptying time based on that we can plan for endotracheal intubation or uh, some other uh, related thing so if it is urgent condition means we can gastric decompression we can do and then we can go for the condition that's why last oral intake is most important and then even leads to injury means the either which trigger that leads to the injury or illness or trauma related things so either it's acute event otherwise chronic event suddenly it's happen otherwise chronically day by day it's developed and then it reaches that level that is the thing we have to mention and then duration also we have to ask so sample history and then next is a secondary assessment in secondary assessment uh, glands of system wise assessment part wise assessment here we are doing first thing is a head if it is a drama you have to uh, open and close the chest to any crepitus sound is there or not and then we have to assess the mental status again and then neck is a jugular venous distension and then tracheal deviation we have to check for jugular venous distension mainly happen in the case of venous congestion either it may be an um, heart failure or tension pneumothorax related things so the ideal concept begin the jugular venous tension distension there will be a congestion in the venous system so the venous system unable to drain its content into the heart that is the thing either uh, it's due to an restriction in the heart restriction in the heart in the sense there will be an Mm, cardiac tamponade might be otherwise heart failure otherwise uh, either first one restriction in the heart otherwise increased intrathoracic pressure so increased intrathoracic pressure will happen in the case of tension pneumothorax that is the cause for the jugular venous distension second thing is a, a tracheal deviation And that is also if deviated trachea either the side which side it's deviated that also we have to mention and then chest and abdominal cavity um, hepatojugular reflex hepatojugular reflex means so here you can see that the person gently pressing on the hepatic region so it will reflect over the jugular region so if you press over the hepatic region there will be a jugular venous distension will happen this is the same like a jugular venous distension again it reflect the venous congestion either it's due to an restriction in the heart otherwise increased intrathoracic pressure and then we have to percuss over the chest area thereby we will get a clue of regarding the consolidation so you you can do the you can um, percuss over the table or a stool anything means there you will hear like a hard sound meanwhile if you percuss over the water filled uh, water filled water bottle means there you will get a some dull sound so that is the difference so if consolidation means you will get a some hard sound so tactile primitus means 
it is a vibration related assessment so you can ask the person to tell something and then you can place your palm over the um, chest region then if it is a normal cases there will be a same um, there will be a same intensity and then it will be like somewhat mild loudness but in the case of um, or uh, more specifically pulmonary uh, edema cases there will be an increased resonance in the sound will be here so that is the tactile perimeter so you can ask the person and then you can place your palm over the chest region and then you can assess the that uh, vibrating sound so the, mainly in normal healthy individuals that will be a minor in nature but in the case of pulmonary edema fluid filled lung cavity there will be an increased resonance sound and the next system is an extremitis so here you have to mention like any pitting edema is there or not that is the thing that will mainly happen in the angles in the lower back so you can just press like a thing and then there you can see the pitting like edema there will be a pit why it's happening means there is a fluid filled thing fluid filled extremity there you are making the pit so the pit will slowly filled up and then gradually it will retain that same level so the gradual filling of the fluid only happening like a uh, forming like a pit like a thing so is there any peripheral cyanosis there or not and then we have to assess the pulse in both extremities both left and right and then we have to compare both sides and then any profound tachycardia or erection or hypoxia is there or not and then pulses paradoxes already we mentioned that also we have to check any fever is there or not skin temperature also we have to mention and then if the person's skin is any cool or clammy uh, due to an shock that is a thing you have to mention and then any distal clubbing due to one chronic hypoxia that also you have to mention uh, clubbing so you can place your fing uh, finger like this and then you can in front of the light if you placed means you can see the diamond window like a thing in a normal healthy individual you can see the diamond window window like appearance but in the case of uh, uh, clubbing related thing there will be no we can't see the diamond window like a thing so that is the difference and then we have to also monitor the pulse oxy end tidal carbon dioxide stethoscope you can use for the auscultation peak expiratory flow meter if you have in your arm ambulance crew you can use those are so these are the things comes in the second reassessment and then third one is the reassessment reassessment in the sense we again we have to repeat the primary survey and then we have to obtain the vital signs and then we have to reassess the chief complaints so and then we have to recheck the intervention so based on the complaint either we act or not what is the improvement in the condition if the person you were while the time if you are receiving the person with a dyspnea otherwise if the person dyspnea related thing due to when any allergy otherwise due to when any bronchos person so either you administered correct nebulization anything or not that you have to recheck and then after a nebulization that person gets worse or the person gets improved that also we have to mention first thing chief complaint we have to reassess and then what's the intervention we did that we have to reassess third thing what is the improvement the person the prognosis of the case also we have to men, uh, we have to recheck and then we have to identify any uh, ill again the person gets worse or improved that also we have to identify and then we have to treat the based on the changes and then time interval for the reassessment if the uh, person is unstable means every 5 minutes or in other term other term as frequently as possible so uh, as frequently as possible we have to reassess if it is a stable case means we can take every 15 minutes for the reassessment that is also important reassessment is a most important thing so you should not stop with a primary survey secondary assessment so every if it is unstable every 5 minutes or as frequently as possible you have to reassess the case if it is a stable case means every 15 minutes every 15 minutes we have to reassess those are the things primary survey we have to do again and then we have to take the vital signs we have to assess the, the chief complaint we have to recheck the intervention and then if any changes mean based on that we have to treat so these are the things of whole format for the respiratory system assessment 
so we start up with the scene size up and then scene safety until the reassessment part so do your best salon